My name is Pam Christensen, and I am currently the Associate Director of Children and Family Ministries at Quest Church. I'm also an SPU alum and an SPU staff alum. I've always grown up with, lived my whole life with disability. My mother has several chronic illnesses that have caused major disability in her life. Um, I have learning disabilities as well as a couple of chronic health issues. Um, my children both have learning disabilities, so it's just something that's always been a part of my life. Um, particularly as a parent, when you have to advocate on behalf of someone else, you learn a lot about the backstory, about the history, about how to advocate, um, simply just so that your own child um, can have the services that he or she needs, and that just spread um, to larger uh, children's ministry disability focus, as well as then the church disability focus. Well, that is a passion of mine. The church has a long history of rejecting, hurting, sometimes making worse people with disabilities. And it's something that we, including myself, has struggled with. We struggle to understand um, how a God who is perfect allows things to happen to people that make them less than perfect in, in the culture's mind. Um, and that's something that the church has to tackle. We have given into society's um, expectations of what healthy, what powerful, what normal looks like, which isn't um, based on the Bible. So it's important that we as Christians dig into the scripture and understand that we are all created in God's image, that we are all called, that we are all gifted, that we all have a purpose here um, in this world. Um, and so that's a passion of mine, discovering more on my own, studying more on my own, but also sharing that with other people, recognizing this is a justice issue, this is a reconciliation issue, mostly this is a heart issue. I am not a theologian um, by any stretch of the imagination, nor am I a pastor even. But Imago Day is the fact that we are creating God's image. It's God's image in us. Um, different philosophers and theologians can debate what that looks like, but in my opinion, it is simply that we are created in His image, and that human beings don't get to define that. Um, a favorite quote of one of our pastors that he loves is one from Pascal that says, God created man in His image, and man returned the favor. Um, we tend to want everyone to fit a certain mold, to look and act and speak a certain way, to learn a certain way, because that's where we're comfortable. Um, but that's not how God created us. We know that God created us all unique. Um, he gifted us all, that we, according to Scripture, are each called for His good. Um, so recognizing the Imago Dei in each of us is essential in order to truly be the body of Christ. I sometimes get asked the question, what if someone becomes disabled after they're born? What if they're not born with a disability? What if there's an accident or an illness that causes their disability? And my response to that is, when Christ came out of the grave, he still had his scars. He didn't have to. He certainly is God Almighty. He didn't have to do that. And yet we don't consider him any less perfect any less whole because of those scars. Um, there are people that have written extensively on that. Nancy Island has written a book on that, but that's about as deep as I go on it. But it seems to me that if God can have brokenness in his own body, um, that, it doesn't, that does not make him any less, then disabilities in our bodies don't make us any less either. There's a quote, and it's often uh, attributed to Thomas Edison. I have done some research and can't find that it actually is his, but I do love it, um, that says, everyone is a genius, but if you judge a fish on its ability to climb a tree, it will spend its life thinking it's stupid. Um, children and adults um, all learn differently. There is a large portion of the population that can learn in what we consider typical ways, but when we don't open our eyes to the ways that the other non-typical kids learn. I think we leave a lot out. We cause a lot of needless suffering that doesn't need to happen. Um, children like my sons can come away feeling that they are foolish, um, that they have nothing to contribute, that they aren't smart. Um, and that's just not the way that educators, particularly Christian educators, want our kids to come across. That's if the object is to teach children 
then we need to learn ways to teach children. And if they can't learn the way that we're teaching, then we as teachers need to learn how to teach them. Um, and I think that is, needs to be the goal of every educator. It is not easy. And I am not foolish enough to believe that it's something that's simple to do. But I believe it is doable. And I believe not only are our kids better for it, but I think teachers are better for it in our world, in our church is better for it when we say, I see you, I see how you learn, um, let me help you. I think that makes a big, big difference in our world. I just think that the church is missing out on so much when we don't recognize uh, the worth of people with disabilities. It's not just people with disabilities being left out. We are missing an essential and important part of our body, um, a point of view that is often missed uh, when we say we want to be the body of Christ, then we truly have to incorporate the whole body. Um, there's a quote by Michael Beetz from his book, Disability and the Gospel, How God Uses Our Brokenness to Display His Grace. The absence of people with disabilities in the church indicates that the church has not yet grasped deeply enough the essence of the gospel. And conversely, God's people have drunk too deeply from the well of cultural ideology with regards to wholeness and brokenness. We don't wish to be reminded by their very presence how much like them we really are. And I think that pretty much sums up um, much of the church's behavior over hundreds of years. Um, we have put people with disabilities in institutions. Um, we have put them out on the street. We have stuck them in hospitals. Um, but we have not done a good job of incorporating them into our communities and recognizing their intrinsic value, which is equal to every other child of God's value. Um, it's challenging, it's hard. It will take a lot of conversation, a lot of understanding, a lot of empathy, a lot of listening, a lot of recognizing ability privilege, which is a hard thing to deal with. Um, but I feel like the church can and is uniquely situated to do this and to lead our world and understand that disability is not a bad thing that disability in many ways is natural and it's a part of our creation.